Hello athletes and fitness enthusiasts, Jürgen Swingles here. Today we are going to talk about glycogen. Perhaps you have read or heard before that our bodies store carbohydrates as glycogen. And glycogen is an important energy source. In this video I'm going to explain what glycogen exactly is and which role it has in exercise and performance. So let's get to it. Glycogen is how our body stores carbohydrates. It is a large molecule containing long chains of glucose molecules. It is mainly found in skeletal, muscle and liver. It is estimated that liver glycogen stores are roughly 100 grams under normal conditions, while skeletal muscle stores are roughly 400 grams. So total glycogen stores is roughly 500 grams. Nevertheless, this is highly variable, dependent on your diet and fitness level. I'll go back to this issue later on in the video. During exercise, the uh, glucose molecules are released from glycogen and become quickly available for energy creation. Muscle glycogen can only be used locally within the muscle cell, while glucose released from liver glycogen can enter the bloodstream and be used by other tissues, including the exercising muscle. Glycogen stores are quite small in size particularly compared to fat stores. They can provide energy for up to 90 minutes when used aerobically, that is with the help of oxygen. In the graph that you see here, energy depletion is plotted against exercise duration for high intensity aerobic exercise. The graph clearly demonstrates that during high intensity aerobic exercise, most of the glycogen stores are used after 90 minutes. The orange line shows that muscle glycogen stores go down rapidly, almost in a straight track. However, at low exercise intensity, the utilization of glycogen is lower because fat will also serve as an important energy source. On the other hand, at high to very high exercise intensity, glycogen is used quite rapidly because this serves as an energy source via the anaerobic glycolysis. This can provide energy at a high rate, but your glycogen is used rather inefficiently and stores empty quickly, sometimes already after 20 to 30 minutes. So the size of your glycogen store is not only relevant for endurance athletes such as runners, cyclists or triathletes, but also for those doing intense anaerobic exercise. In the following graph, energy depletion is plotted against exercise duration for anaerobic exercise, so without oxygen. The graph demonstrates that a high intensity anaerobic exercise, the glycogen reserves are used up pretty rapidly, sometimes already in less than 30 minutes. The black line indeed shows a steep decline of glycogen reserves, especially if compared to high intensity aerobic exercise. During long, high-quality training sessions, when glycogen levels become critically low, the body has to rely on fat as an energy store, energy source rather. And although fat is an excellent energy source, the intensity of your exercise has to go down because fat is slightly less efficient in creating energy. As a consequence, you are not able to continue exercise at a high intensity anymore. You might feel like hitting a wall. As I said, the two major factors setting your resting glycogen level are your diet and your fitness level. 
on a high carbohydrate diet, muscle glycogen stores are much higher than on a low carbohydrate diet. In this graph, energy depletion is plotted against exercise duration for long duration aerobic exercise. The blue line in the graph demonstrates that during long aerobic training sessions, glycogen reserves will last much longer. This is because the body will rely more on fat as an energy source. For comparison, you see the glycogen usage during anaerobic exercise and high intensity aerobic exercise as well, represented by the black and orange line respectively. And that is why athletes, players in particular, those active in endurance exercise increase their carbohydrate intake the days before a competition. Because starting a competition or match with high glycogen levels will delay the point of fatigue. To optimize your glycogen stores, it is advised to ingest at least 3 to 8 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram body weight per day. The suggested range accommodates variations in training loads, individual training goals, body composition targets and other factors. And in case of more intense training period and on the day before a race or match, that recommendation increases to 6 to 8 gram per kilogram. In addition, trained muscles of those with a good fitness level are able to store more glycogen compared to untrained muscles. For quick recovery of your glycogen after exercise, it is advised to consume about 1 gram of carbohydrates per kilogram body weight during the first 4 hours after training or match. For a 70 kilogram athlete, this means consuming 70 gram of carbohydrates per hour, which translates roughly into 4 slices of bread or 100 gram spaghetti per hour. Complete recovery of your glycogen levels takes 20 to 24 hours, but can be accelerated a bit when you apply a rather aggressive carbohydrate intake strategy like professional cyclists will do during multiple stage races, as for example the Tour de France. They start eating immediately after exercise and have multiple meals with lots and lots of carbohydrates before they go to sleep. I'm sure that after this video about glycogen, you will agree that it's difficult to overstate the importance of adequate carbohydrate intake for daily training as well as for match day or competition. Indeed, for endurance athletes and team sport athletes, carbohydrates are truly the master fuel. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We're dropping videos like this on YouTube on a regular basis. And if you have questions, leave them in the comment box below with hashtag School of Sport Nutrition and I'll do my best to get in there and get those questions answered right away.